you know, let's talk about some of the core foundational concepts of how we manage light. And photography really has a great system for this. Over the history of photography, the standardized method that's been developed for seeing, communicating, and managing light, and the, the, the things that people have devised to work with it are, are really amazing. And a lot of this stuff you may already know, but let's cover this and make sure we have this foundation, because as we go through this workshop, we're gonna take these essential concepts and we're gonna be using them all the time. And so we need to understand, we need to all be on the same page. So how do we talk about light in photography? Well, the main way we talk about it is the stop, okay? We talk about an f-stop of light. We have an f-stop on our, on our aperture of our camera, controlling the size of that opening. We have an f-stop in terms of how much light we're putting on. We have an f-stop in terms of our shutter speed and our ISO. The beauty is they're all the same. Whether it's an ISO or a shutter speed or an aperture or an exposure value setting or a zone. As, as we go through this, we're gonna tie all this together, but the bottom line is it all revolves around the stop. You know, as I look around this scene out here in the forest, you know, and I've got the water running and I've got different shadows and tones and lights and, and I might come in here and say, okay, what can I do with this? The more I understand and the more I can look around and understand what that light's doing. I need to be able to see, see that light and then not only see and, and plan what I want to do with it and visualize it, I need to know exactly what to do with it. What I want is we can just snatch this stuff right out of the air on command and have it in our head knowing what we need to do with it. There's a basic math around the stop. And that, of course, is doubling or halving your light. That's, that's what a stop is. Let's use a simple analogy. Let's say I'm sitting out here and I've got a 100-watt I've got a light bulb, okay? And, and I have a really long cord running from, like, miles away and it hooks up. No, okay. So I've got a 100-watt light bulb and I want to add a stop of light. How do I add a stop of light to that, what that 100-watt light bulb is? And let's, let's kind of exclude the ambient light and stuff for now. Let's say, let's say it's dark out and I got a 100 watt light bulb, all right? If I want to double the light hitting my face, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to add another 100 watt light bulb, okay? I just doubled the light, I just added one stop of light, okay? What if I want to double it again? I don't add a third light bulb. That would only be a half stop, because remember, each time we have to double or half. It's, a, it's that basic math approach. I need four light bulbs at that point, all right? For light bulbs, I'd have two stops. What if I want to add three stops of light? I'd need eight light bulbs. Four stops of light, 16 light bulbs, and so on. What if I want to have the light? What if I say, hey, that's too much light? Well, 50 watt light bulb. Now, of course, there's different ways we can move the light away, we can move the light closer. And in this analogy, I'm talking about an artificial light, but it, but it all works in the same premise, in the same concept. Let's say we're out here and we want to cut the light in half. Well, we can, we can increase our aperture by a stop. We can go from f5.6 to f8, full aperture. And the, full, the aperture scale in full stops is something we should look at too. That's something you want to remember when you're in the field is knowing what those full stops are. Because knowing a full stop, you can know that you've doubled or have the light. You know, I may be out here and you may look around at this scene and you know, I might be down here and be in the shadows, maybe around exposure value you know, eight and up here maybe a 14. And I can say, okay, I want to expose, and I, I'm doing some tests. I'm looking at my histogram. Maybe I'm blocking up down in the shadows, and I want to increase by a stop. Now, of course, we want to use meters. We want to plan as best as possible. We want to get into zones, all that kind of stuff. And that's what we're going to do as we go through this. But understanding what you're seeing, what's happening with the light, is going to make all this so much simpler. You know, the exposure value is yet another stop. Exposure value is something that you see on the back of your camera, but it actually is a whole system. You know, you have the little meter on the back of your camera on these modern digital cameras, and we might uh, do an EV compensation, exposure value compensation. We might overexpose by a stop or underexpose by a stop. And, or we might bracket in two EV increments. Bottom line is it's all using stops. The exposure value scale goes down from one to, I believe it's 20. And then whether it's exposure value, ISO, aperture, whatever it is we're working with, it's stop increments, it's consistent. Now. Let's use a quick scenario. Okay, let's say I'm out here and I'm at uh, one one hundred one hundredth of a second at ISO 100 at f5.6, all right? So I'm looking at this scene and I'm, I'm running some tests, maybe doing some metering, and I'm like, I need to get a, a full stop more of light, okay? Now a meter might just tell me, okay, do this, you know, but I don't just wanna do what a meter tells me in the sense that just go with whatever setting it comes up with. I wanna know how to flex. I wanna know how to reach out there and pull something out and, and work with it. Sorry, I'm distracted. There's a centipede right here, but it's cool. I'll keep talking. 
Um, we got this scenario. I want to add a stop of light. I'm at one hundredth of a second, ISO 100 F56. Okay, what are, what are the ways I could do that? Well, let's, let's say I'm using natural light out here and I'm not adding in strobes or anything like that. And I could either have my shutter speed because by going down, by going half the shutter speed, twice the amount of light is now reaching my film or my sensor, okay? Or I could double my ISO, okay? Now my sensor's twice as sensitive, I've increased by a stop that way too, all right? Or I could reduce my aperture. I could go from F5.6 to F4. I just double the light because I made the hole that the light's coming through bigger. Now everything has a cause and effect and that's the beauty of understanding the basic foundations of the system. Knowing that, we can come in and say what exactly do we want to do with it? I might say, okay, switching down to F4 would double my light, but if I go down to F4, I may not have enough depth of field. Okay, well, going down to 50th of, excuse me, yes, 50th of a second. Okay, that would double my light too. That might work in a scene, but I gotta think about my shutter speed. Will things be blurry? Maybe I just wanna increase to ISO 200. Now I've doubled my light as well. So the thing to understand about the core concepts of exposure is the base of that is the stop in pretty much everything we're working with in photography. And understanding that basic math of, hey, I can, I can double my light, I add a stop. I can have my light, I reduce a stop. Understanding those core concepts and the different ways we can manipulate it is gonna give us a lot of power over managing our light. So even though probably a lot of you watching this knew these basic concepts, but now we're all on the same page, we have kind of this refresher of making sure we're visualizing. Don't just be like, yeah, I know that, but think about, okay, yeah, I add that extra light bulb, I've increased my light a stop. I've, I've doubled it. You know, ISO 100 to 200, I've increased my light a stop, I've doubled it. Core concepts of exposure that is, long as we understand it. If we can just grab it out of the air at a moment's notice, it makes everything easier. Great light isn't something that just falls into our laps. We gotta see it, we gotta sculpt it, and we gotta make it work for us. Even if it's there, if we don't know what to do with it, it's simply not going to work. 